Great. Welcome everyone to the first CSC Student Success Network webinar featuring Cal Poly Pomona's Poly Transfer Program. Um, and if Cal Poly, if you'll just go to the next slide. Thank you. I'm Tara Thorne and I lead the convenings work for the CSU Student Success Network, which is an independent network created to bring together faculty, staff, and administrators from throughout the CSU to connect and improve student learning, engagement, and progression. Um, on the line, we also have Melinda Karp of Phase 2 Advisory. She's my partner in crime for the convenings work for the network. And of course, the folks at Cal Poly Pomona who will be talking shortly about their transfer program. But before they do, I wanted to just briefly talk about why we're doing this webinar, and then I'll hand it over to the team at Cal Poly Pomona. So the last network convening was centered on transfer student success. And we asked participants at the event to provide us some feedback about how they wanted to continue to engage with the network and in what ways we could help further their work on transfer. We also asked whether there were specific campuses that teams wanted to hear more from. And what we learned is that there was really a strong appetite from teams to continue to be able to engage with each other around the programs and practices happening in the CSU that support transfer student success. And of the 14 campuses that we had attending that convening, 12 said that they wanted to hear more from Cal Poly Pomona about what they're doing to, port, to support their transfer students. And thus the idea for this webinar was born. Our hope is that it will extend the learning that began at the convening and it will provide a space to continue sharing and engaging around transfer student success in the CSU. Um, so, if you have any questions that arise during the presentation, we're going to go ahead and use the chat feature for that, so please feel free to type them in there. Melinda will be curating questions um, as the presentation continues, and we'll address them at the end. I also want to just briefly mention that we're recording the webinar, so if you had colleagues that were unable to attend but were still interested, it will be made available on our website. Um, so without further ado, let's turn it over to Drs. Terry Gomez and Lorena Marquez, who are going to share more about how Cal Poly Pomona supports transfer student success with their poly transfer program. Thank you so much, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm Terry Gomez. I am the founding director of poly transfer, a faculty member here at, at Cal Poly Pomona in ethnic and women's studies, and currently the interim associate vice president for student success. And hello and welcome. My name is Lorena Marquez. I am the current Poly Transfer Coordinator. I've been here for a little under two years, uh, but I've been at Cal Poly Pomona's campus for over 15 years in different capacities, from athletics to the Office of Student Six, uh, the Office of Student Life and Cultural Centers, and now with Poly Transfer. So we, we organized this conversation around five main themes, and we want to talk to you a little bit about the origins of the program. Uh, talk a little bit about some of our funding history, what we do here, uh, preliminary data, and perhaps have a conversation about some challenges and the future directions of not just our program, but many of yours. So seizing the moment, uh, origins. We, uh, I was a faculty member in Ethnic and Women's Studies, but I had been doing work with really my student affairs collaborators in outreach and admissions and student support and equity programs, which houses EOP. And we were working together on a number of, of uh, issues, particularly around underrepresented minority URM students on campus. But we were always concerned about transfer students. I am a transfer student. It's part of central to my identity. And I came through, uh, through UCLA with a, in a very successful transfer program. I just want to remind folks to mute your, your, your speaker if you could. Thank you. I came through a very successful transfer summer program at UCLA that really changed my life. And I, I, I noticed, as did my colleagues, that we really didn't have any support for transfer class. Uh, about the same time, we were starting to see the development of uh, associate degrees for transfer, which is a really important development for our work. And uh, my colleagues in admissions and student support and equity programs offered to, oops, I'll then have to, uh, uh, offered to give us uh, student assistance, to fund some student assistance to do transfer research. 
And uh, we, we ended up applying for a grant and we got it. And that was a little troubling because I had never run a grant, but uh, we needed to find space and staff. And so we relied on our, our college, my dean and the College of Education and Integrative Studies provided us with a, a, a space to, to develop our program. And we hired staff. Uh, getting campus buy-in was both easy and difficult, uh, and, and we've worked really hard to do it, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we proceed. We always ask folks for free stuff, so our partners um, pay for different items, whether it's meals or uh, swag or housing, but we've been able to sustain ourselves through our collaborations. So a little bit about our funding history. In 2013, uh, we seized upon the CSU Academic and Student Success Programs RFP, and it was just about the time I had my transfer research assistant. So um, we just happened to have transfer research available, and we proposed a program, which was a collaboration with Student Affairs. And lo and behold, we got an $80,000 grant, which isn't much, but it's permanent baseline allocation, which is wonderful. In 2015, we also secured a campus grant, and this was really uh, focused on our peer mentoring program. We, we knew that this was really important to develop, and, and so we were able to use this funding over a couple of years. More recently, we've been able to access CSU student success monies for a pipeline uh, project that we're doing with our K-12 partners. And then last year, we were invited to be part of an NSF STEM Cubed grant, which was a collaboration between Citrus and Cal State Fullerton, and we were invited to join in on that grant. And then, gosh, a month ago, we found out that the Crank Start Foundation had uh, provided um, uh, uh, funding for, sorry, our, our, our PowerPoint's going crazy, for a transfer scholarship. So we're just about to award our first uh, 15 transfer scholarships this year. <laughs> okay. So to talk about our mission, uh, truly our uh, mission of Poly Transfer is to assist new transfer students in their transition to Cal Poly Pomona as well as work with all transfer students to create a transfer receptive culture. And that is done truly by creating opportunities for students to be engaged through academic or social activities. Um, and that looks like in the form of workshops, uh, working with campus partners, uh, and really taking advantage of all that they have to offer. Um, some of, the, uh, in, some of the, the information that we provide is the one-on-one -on -one personalized problem solving. And so myself and the student success specialist, which is uh, through the grant, uh, are able to provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship in terms of making sure that they're, the transfer students are able to uh, get guidance and navigate the campus. Uh, we recognize that uh, we, we want to debunk the, the stereotype of transfer students already have been at a college campus and therefore they know how to navigate the campus, uh, but they're coming to us in a new form. They're coming to a new campus and we want to recognize that. And so we provide as much as we can to make sure that the transition is smooth as possible. Um, as well as part of our quarterly workshops is to focus on the academic, professional, and per per personal growth of our transfer students. And that isn't done just by ourselves, but it's really done with the partnership of many CPP departments on our campus. And uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So there are really three pillars to poly transfer. The first is a series of transfer high impact practices that we, we believe are particularly successful for underrepresented students. Uh, and the second pillar is building a transfer receptive culture. This is particularly important because we often put the onus on community college, uh, community college partners uh, and uh, we don't take at the CSU and four-year institutions, we don't take institutional responsibility for the way that we're receiving transfer students. So this has been a, a, a primary focus of our work. And then finally, the third pillar is really strengthening these transfer pathways, certainly with community colleges, but as we've evolved, we've also realized the importance of working with our K-12 partners. And we wanted to provide uh, you all with a visual in terms of 
the work that we do and all those that are involved. We are out of the Office of Student Success, but as you can see, the core is, the tra is our transfer students. And so we work to make sure that we're addressing the needs of our transfer students. Um, and through that, we have transfer students who are peer mentors uh, that work in the Poly Transfer Office, as well as Student Success Ambassadors. And Student Success Ambassadors help with the day-to-day, -day, the office logistics, uh, while the peer mentors work with uh, creating the relationships and mentorship opportunities with not only our summer cohort participants, but as well as expansion to all transfers. <laughs> Um, circling that is myself, the coordinator, uh, the student success specialist, which is, like I said, grant funded. And then we have a volunteer graduate intern from a local graduate program uh, nearby who assists us with the office work and just uh, all the behind the scenes work that happens. Um, but as we've mentioned, we mentioned, and we will mention over and over again, it's really through the campus partnerships on our campus where we're able to really develop a transfer student success initiatives um, and just work in partnership with whatever is going on and what is being offered through our campus partners. And um, through the Office of Student Success, as Dr. Gomez has mentioned, a uh, new area which really is focusing on student success, but because of what PolyTransfer does, uh, it's really great to be able to be under those initiatives. So when I came to the Office of Student Success, we also bought, brought PolyTransfer here so we continue to have close uh, connections and partnerships. So a little bit about our transfer hips. For, we're a first year experience program and we begin with the summer transition and we would love to be a five or six week uh, how, uh, residential program but frankly we just don't have the funding. So we, we have settled for a three day uh, uh, summer program and we've been pretty successful so what we really try to do there is target our URMs. Um, the heart and soul of our program is the peer mentoring. And uh, more recently, we have a transfer student, student, excuse me, transfer student society. This happens to be a picture of the transfer student society with our president in the middle at uh, a tailgate last week. And uh, they certainly are an enthusiastic group. Our summer program. So we target URMs. And the way that we do this is through our partnership with admissions. The moment students have accepted their offer, we get the lists of, and the contact information from, from admissions, and we start reaching out to those students and inviting them to be part of our program. We also do this at orientation, but these, this collaboration with admissions allows us to get to these transfer students the minute that they've committed to Cal Poly. Another important element of the summer program is exposing transfer students to undergraduate research opportunities and graduate school. And we know the importance of this for transfer students. When you're freshmen, you have plenty of time to find out about research opportunities and, uh, and, and transfer students don't have that luxury. So we needed to make sure that we brought that information to transfer students. One of the things that we've been able to do in collaboration with the Office of Undergraduate Research and the McNair program is to actually develop a transfer McNair program for these students. And so they're introduced to these opportunities when they get here. They also see students quite like themselves on this graduate student panel, transfer students who are now in graduate school, and they can ask them questions about their experience and about programs, and they can begin to already think about what those next steps will be. And in working with admissions, um, we, we work in terms of making sure that we are targeting the URM, uh, but then as well as making sure that we connect with the transfer student by giving them a phone call, uh, sending, them, sending them an email, asking for their personal email as well as their new CPP email. Uh, so that's part of the transition in terms of them then being a part of Cal Poly Pomona's uh, campus. Um, and some of the other things that we also offer in the summer program is the academic lectures. And those are important components for them to start seeing themselves in the classroom here at Cal Poly Pomona. And we know that it, the importance of, uh, of our students to be able to engage with faculty. And so we have faculty that are able to create opportunities and, and connections and relationships so that they can begin to establish those uh, early on in the summer. Uh, some of the campus resources that we offer is our university library will come out and do a workshop. Um, our career center will, will talk to them about graduate school. Um, and then those are just ways for them, again, to make more, more resources, more connections on campus. When they get on campus, when fall starts, moving on to um, 
terms, uh, we're moving to semesters, uh, they really know a handful of folks. And so they really have this special opportunity to get connected with folks, not just our office, but we introduce them to many other folks on campus as well. And through um, the National Student uh, Survey on Engagement, we know that in involvement and, and engagement is important in terms of persistence and graduation. Uh, and so that's a big component of adding student clubs and organizations, uh, organization and having a fair for the students to then meet other students. Um, and we do ask the club members to, to send over transfers so that they can begin to share the story. And so not only do they see their peer mentor, but they, they begin to see other transfer students who have been successful and really looking at the strengths and the assets that they have and that they're bringing to, um, to Cal Poly Pomona. But lastly, our transfer and graduation advisors, um, this is really important in terms of just making sure that they know the people that are going to make sure to see them be successful through the way of their transfer uh, credit report. And so being able to understand where they're at with their transfer credit report uh, early on is important so that they're not taking classes that already meet um, the requirements of, of that, of that uh, TCR. We average between 100 and 150 students in our summer program and then we track them throughout the year and we involve them in other opportunities. So we uh, then go on to our as, uh, quarterly academies and workshops. As Lorena mentioned, we are converting to semesters, which is a ton of fun. <laughs> uh, and we launch in fall, so uh, we'll start organizing this around two terms. But uh, we begin our, our quarterly academies and, and workshops with our fall transfer welcome reception. This is a pretty big deal on our campus. So where we have 100, 150 students in our summer program, very targeted, focused group, the transfer welcome is open to all new transfer students. And we get lots of folks in administration uh, and in, uh, from the colleges, from student affairs across divisions to come and welcome these students, transfer students, and their families. And again, this is a partnership. We can't afford to feed all these folks, but uh, we partner with student affairs and orientation. They provide the food and we provide the welcome. Uh, and then just for our fall 2017 enrollment, it was 49% was transfer students. Um, so, so we recognize that being a big component of why we need to do a reception uh, to be able to welcome uh, transfers and their families and their parents. We welcome them to assist uh, in, in making sure that we're providing a welcoming environment. Uh, but the last two quarters, we've had winter admits. And so ASI approached us about funding a transfer winter welcome. And so that's just another way of how we seize the moment. Folks on campus are recognizing their, their piece in terms of being able to create a transfer receptive culture from their own areas. And so uh, having that support and having that funding is, is crucial in terms of the success of, of our work, but then also for our transfer student success. Um, part of what we do is, uh, is very strategic and intentional. And so you'll see, a couple of flyers, a couple bullets of, of different workshops and academies that we host, uh, but really it's all done strategically. And so we work with our dashboards, um, our database in terms of making sure that we are looking at the transfer students and where they're at. If we see that the uh, students are, haven't taken their graduate writing test or, or potentially have a list of students that have taken it a couple of times, we make sure that we do targeted marketing to make sure that they understand that they can come to us, probably transfer, uh, talk to a peer about how they passed the test or what uh, tips that they, they took, but then also have these uh, real, real life uh, workshops uh, and sessions where they can attend. The transfer transition workshop really is to address the transfer shock and transfer shock not just on the quarterly to semester or the quarter, the semester to quarterly uh, uh, trans, uh, shock that may occur, um, but also really just one campus to another campus. Uh, navigating an, a, a completely different campus can be overwhelming, uh, that can lead to stress. And so we really want to make sure that we provide them with the best tips uh, so that they can navigate the campus. Um, and then lastly, I would like to say that Poly transfer uh, part of what we do is really create leaders. Our, our summer program cohort members are in and out of the, the office. Uh, they're in leadership positions. Uh, they're, they're in the front desk of our cultural centers. And, and really we started seeing the need of also providing that, uh, not just to the summer cohort participants, but to all transfers. And so we work with our Office of Student Life and cultural centers to assist in creating a transfer track. 
um, so that they can then uh, be recognized as leaders um, and have all these different transfer specific uh, workshops that they can attend as well. So just pulling in all of our resources and thinking uh, uh, smarter and not working harder per se. And so we, the summer program has 100 students. We pick up more transfer students throughout the year with each of these workshops, and then we invite them to be part of our ongoing engagement with transfer students. What we found recently uh, was a, a dip in attendance. And so we, we really needed to reflect on what was causing it and how, more importantly, how we could respond. And so in the past, in the past few years, we had these, these uh, quarterly activities where we would draw students from across campus. But as the enrollment dropped, we realized we needed a new strategy. So we uh, took our show on the road and we are now doing more college specific engagement in the colleges with key partners in the colleges. So the, the evolution was just, we were asking the students to come to us. And so now we work with our uh, college staff uh, coordinators, our, our faculty partners who we already have relationships and, and really work to create even more relationships. So this is an opportunity for our students to meet faculty. Um, we went up to our Collins College, which is up the hill, and it's not an easy uh, 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 walk of stairs to do, but the students really appreciate it. It's, a student said to us, wow, you came all the way up here for us. And so that's us showing that we're committed to our transfer student population, uh, but then also just working hand in hand with our academic partners um, in the work that they're doing, because really that's where we want to see them succeed. Uh, part of this program is to then uh, have them come out, meet us, uh, and potentially meet any faculty or staff that attend as well, uh, but then also do the follow-up. And so we do the follow-up and uh, choose a selected group of students to then get a VIP Bronco card so then they can have a now out of the classroom uh, interaction with their faculty. And so it's just, we have seen the we have seen how we have benefited from relationship and partnerships, and we want to make sure that we develop that for our transfer students as well. And that was an idea that we borrowed from San Jose. They give students an opportunity to invite a faculty member to coffee and I think lunch too now. And so it's actually been really successful. We look forward to expanding that. But these are the ideas that come to us through sharing and we adapt them to our campus and we hope they'll work. Uh, this is just a brief list, and, and I do mean brief list, of some of our campus partners. And you can see it, it, it's across divisions, but these folks really help us get the word out. They do presentations, sometimes it's financial support. And it's really, really important that it's all of our success. And so um, we couldn't function without them. And, and that's really the key to the success of our program. And I just wanted to point out just a few. Housing has three floors of transfers. Uh, athletics have transfer students uh, that they that they, uh, they recruit from um, community colleges. Uh, currently, right now, our student uh, success specialist is at a at a advancement uh, workshop in terms of the campaign that we'll be uh, pushing to fundraise monies. And so, really, it is about cross divisional university wide partnerships um, and efforts in order to to be supportive of our transfer students. Um, and I think that that's that speaks volumes in terms of just the work that we're doing, um, but also just if you see this list, like Dr. Gomez is saying, it, this is just a, a glimpse of who we talk to, who we work with, um, and it does take work. Uh, but I think in terms of what we have seen, we have seen we've seen a lot of uh, a benefit in terms of making sure that the students are accessing all these folks. Project Success is our new male uh, men of color initiative, and Lorena has been working really closely with them so that they also target transfer students. And she certainly mentioned housing, which has a, a transfer floor. These are really important developments on our campus, and we're able to play a small role in collaborating with these folks. And I guess the last thing I would say is, um, you know, this list, think about, I'm, I'm sure, two or three areas that you have in your uh, campus where you can start making those connections. Because like we said, for 49%, the trend of transfer students at our campus, um, I imagine it's the same as at yours. The second pillar of poly transfer is really a difficult one for us, and it's to build a transfer receptive culture. Uh, central to this concept of 
TRC, transfer receptive culture, is the belief that students will be successful because they are transfer students. And this is in opposition to the belief that they are successful despite being a transfer student. And this comes out of the work at, from folks at UCLA who really have been pioneers in developing this transfer receptive culture uh, scholarship. And what we found is that our campus is similar to other campuses in that there are plenty of stereotypes about transfer students so that you know, we've had to work really hard to try to debunk some of these myths. And we've done it in a variety of ways. We began with a We Heart Transfer Students campaign, which was really placards that had, here you see two, the version 2.0, which is the t-shirts. But the first version was, was really just the placards that staff and faculty would put uh, outside their door so that transfer students saw the reflection. They would know that when they arrived at that door, they had an ally that they could turn to. Simple things, small things, inexpensive things that have an impact on our students. These t-shirts are now worn across campus too, and that's really important so that folks know that they belong here. And We work really hard to foster these connections, but it's, it's a lot, it, it, it takes a deep commitment from the campus. And you know, we often put the onus on the, on the community colleges, but this is our attempt to own our, our responsibility in creating this transfer receptive culture on this campus. Another part of our, our program is a transfer symposium that we hold each year in the spring. And we're able to bring national leaders around transfer scholarship and work um, practitioners to come and talk to not just our campus and campus leaders, but also we invite community college leaders and uh, K-12 partners to come be a part of the conversation. And that's really important to continue to hear about current research and practices that are impacting uh, this important segment of our population. We have an I Am First campaign here that's been very successful. So if you come to our campus, you'll see a number of uh, posters, I Am First, first generation faculty and staff. And they also tell their story through, a, a, through video as well. We are taking this and creating a, a, a version that's the transfer edition. And so you know, we're, we're making sure to include transfer voices there. And uh, we're going to launch that this year, but we're also going to build peer mentoring around those I Am First campaigns. And then finally, in terms of building a transfer re receptive culture, we really have had to take a deep look into um, transfer visibility, not just on campus, but wherever students are at. And one way to do transfer visibility is also to think about um, beyond what we do in real life. So IRL is, stands for in real life, um, but making sure that we also have an online presence. And so the digital student is with us and we need to make sure that we're, we're there as well. And so this last summer, uh, through all the orientation presentations that our peer mentors were doing, uh, they, were telling, or they, were telling, they were telling transfer students to make sure to follow us, whether it be on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, we do not have Snapchat yet, um, but it was a, a, a huge component of making sure that the students knew that if they couldn't come to an event because of timing or whatnot, that they can still get engaged and involved. And so that helps to build an online campus community for transfer students. And as you see, we have a, a picture of our Instagram and our Twitter uh, and folks all over campus in terms of our partners and the university, obviously uh, helping us in terms of getting the message out and making sure that our reach is, is far. Uh, but this is just one way in terms of the visibility. Like we talked of campus partners, that's how we create transfer receptive culture, um, our first year experience, high impact practices. Those are just different forms of how we're trying to develop a transfer receptive culture on campus. Our third pillar of the program is really strengthening the transfer pathways. And we do this through a, a number of avenues. Certainly collaborating with our community colleges is critical and we do this through our outreach folks. We started with our three uh, primary feeder schools and then we spread out to the five biggest feeders and we're continuing to do this work. We mentioned the STEM Cube grant earlier. This actually emerged out of our partnership with Citrus and frankly our, our good relationship with Cal State Fullerton. And so those opportunities have been really wonderful. Um, we recently expanded to the K-12 pipeline, and to the right you see a picture of 
a number of fifth graders who were just on our campus wearing a I am a future Bronco t-shirt with our, you can't see it because of poly transfer logo in the, in the O of the Bronco. And uh, that program emerged out of the White House Initiative on Latino Excellence in Higher Ed. It was, we submitted a, a proposal during the Obama administration that was recognized and supported by our campus and also with, by, uh, with Pomona Unified. And it's an attempt to really begin to create these pipelines that will probably involve community college, but may also be directly into a, a four-year institution. So it involves fifth grade tours. Uh, we're, we hope to have every fifth grader in Pomona Unified visit our campus. And Pomona Unified is also sending all sixth graders to uh, Mount Sac, our local community college. And so they're making sure that they have several touch points with our college partners. And then we're about to uh, launch our, our middle school peer mentoring program. Given our limited funding, we're not able to staff uh, a lot of these programs, so we have to be creative. And so we can work with our office of uh, our Center for Community Engagement and, and service learning programs and offices to provide opportunities for our students to be peer mentors in the middle school. And a part of that K-12 partnership uh, has been parent engagement. This is actually connected to Lorena's expertise. She recently completed her, her doctorate around parent engagement. And so we've included, her, included that as part of what we do as well. And this has been a wonderful surprise, frankly. Um, we started working with the parents as part of our partnership, but then they wanted more. And so they wanted us to uh, help them uh, with some of their conferences. So at first we would come and do presentations. And then more recently, they, they organized a parent conference where they were, uh, they were wanting us to train the trainers, so to train parents to give presentations to other parents. And so those parents came to campus and they wanted to meet with the Disability Resource Center, admissions, outreach, key financial aid, key partners on campus so that they could get the information and then they presented it to parents. It was highly successful. And uh, this weekend we have homecoming. And we now have homecoming family day. So we have, we're expecting about 200 parents and students from Pomona Unified who are going to join us as part of our homecoming event that's grown out of the collaboration with Poly Transfer. So the data, is it working? Uh, the short answer is we think so. It's hard to know if, if it's Poly Transfer that's having the effect and we need to do a better job of assessing and and uh, tracking our data, but we, we do see a slow and steady progress. So here you just have some comparison data between our cohort and uh, the campus transfer cohorts, and you can see that um, we're having good success. Our transfer students in general do well once they get to Cal Poly, uh, and, you know, and, our, and our poly transfer students seem to do just a little bit better. So we think that we're doing something special. We need to know a little bit more with the secret sauces and then be able to expand on those efforts. But there is challenges as we move towards the future. Um, the transfer student voice is really an important aspect of the beginnings of poly transfer and really the conveying that we had at Long Beach helped us to develop uh, the, the transfer advocates group uh, council. So we like to call it TAG and just the folks that attended that uh, started to to talk and, and really listen as well in terms of what you all were sharing uh, and what was what was being done, what isn't being done, and how do we really close the loop. And so we're closing the loop by looking at assessment, uh, but also being very intentional about uh, what kind of assessment and what we're going to do with the assessment. So keeping ourselves accountable to make sure that uh, the work is being done. Um, and some of that has already begun to happen in terms of the new strategic plan and academic master plan. Uh, our Vice President of Student Affairs and our Provost had uh, three focus groups and one of them was transfer students last year. And through that focus group, uh, the students were sharing that our Poly Transfer Office, uh, you'll see at the top picture, is small but mighty, as, as like we like to say. Uh, but they did talk about a lot about the space and so they were listened to and now we're looking at the new building which is the second picture below and we're going to have a, a place there and so that's really going to help us have um, 
more of a, a presence, I, I believe, in terms of just where, where transfer student voices are at, but still doing the work in terms of what are the students, in, what are the students need and what services we can provide. And like many of your campuses, you're either getting new presidents or you're about, uh, or you just, you just got a new president, and that means new administration, and that often means new strategic plans or master plans. Those are wonderful opportunities to include a transfer voice. And so we have been very intentional about being at the table and making sure to ask, how is this impacting transfer students? And uh, it's not always an easy conversation, but it's an important one. Um, we really would love to expand our FYE experience, and we know the importance of FYE programs for our freshmen, and we'd like to do more with transfers. And one of the ways that we'd like to do that is to have a course, not just a three-day uh, program, but an actual transfer course. Now, that's a hard sell for transfer students because, as you know, transfer students come in with more credits than they need, and the last thing they need to take is a course that doesn't count for anything. So one of the things that we proposed, and we wrote a, uh, what we thought was a really innovative grant, it didn't get funded, but we still have the idea, was uh, to, to offer a GE synthesis course. It's actually a film course, but it, it was a way of documenting transfer student experiences. We still think it's a great idea. Once we get settled into semesters, we're probably going to loop back and try it, do a pilot of that. But uh, we want to just continue to find ways of including transfers in the curriculum and making sure that we're engaging them. And then finally, expanding funding to build capacity. We're always trying to find new partners, new grant opportunities. Um, and grants with community colleges are really important to our success and we suspect to yours as well. And uh, the Department of California Department of Finance is about to release its Innovations Grant RFP. And we're told that that RFP will actually require that a community college be the lead on that grant. This is a great opportunity for folks to look to your community, local community colleges and say, how can we partner? How can we be a part of this opportunity? Uh, regional collaboration. So there was a, a, a phase in funding where systems were, 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 being, were, uh, were targeted for grants. And now we're told that there's been a, a more of a shift to regional collaborations. These are really important and we see them throughout, the, throughout California. So for instance, for us, we're part of the LA Compact, which includes uh, what we call the CSU-5, uh, Northridge, Los Angeles, Dominguez Hills, certainly us, and Long Beach. And we're proposing we're, uh, a, a couple of different uh, grants and, we're, and working with funders to fund some transfer-specific work, some promise work, and some K-12 pipeline work around these regional collaborations. Again, you kind of just have to figure out what the trends are and then figure out who your partners are and, and take some risks. For us, staying focused on our mission has uh, frankly been a challenge sometimes. And even this shiny new building you see to the right here on, in this picture, we're really excited about that. But we also want to make sure we don't lose our focus on our mission, which was initially to serve underrepresented transfer students. And so we want to make sure that we continue to target our underserved populations while also trying to meet the needs of a broader transfer population. And then GI 2025, graduation initiative. What an incredible opportunity for us. And I say that because this is really the first graduation initiative in the CSU that has an intentional focus on transfer students. And uh, with that intentional focus, focus also comes funding to your campuses. So um, it's a great opportunity to meet with your leaders and to ask about some of those one-time funds to get some pilots going or some of that permanent allocations that are coming as a result of GI 2025. You're being asked to, um, to really increase your transfer graduation rates for both two and four years, four year uh, transfer students. And there needs to be some funding behind those efforts. So again, seize the moment. And we recognize that many others have, have and are doing the work with transfer student success. And so we wanted to highlight a few folks and just historically in terms of 
what we have uh, looked upon UCLA in terms of the uh, partnerships and the research that existed in the history, but also just others that are doing the work. And we recognize that we're not the only ones um, doing transfer student success work. Um, but, but truly in, in terms of being able to create a transfer receptive culture here at Cal Poly Pomona, uh, we want to make sure that everyone else is also doing their part so then the CSU itself can also work towards making sure that they're creating a transfer receptive culture across the, the state. And that's our presentation, so we'd love to have a conversation with you. Uh, thank you all. This is Melinda Karp, um, and I cannot thank you all enough for this. This was so useful. Um, I'm going to assume people can hear me unless someone chats otherwise. These yes. technologies make me nervous. Um, we have a bunch of questions in, in the text box, and I'm just going to start at the beginning. Um, one of the questions is really just about a definitional question. You, you spoke a little bit earlier, I think in terms of the summer program, around having students attend academic lectures. Um, it would be useful to, for us to know what that means. Is that you know, professors or lectures about how to be successful? What do you mean by an academic lecture? Thanks for the question. We actually bring in faculty to do um, some mock lectures and then also just to provide, like, so we have a faculty member who does writing. Uh, she comes in and does a, a writing lecture three times throughout each day for each, uh, in the program. And then she also creates a, um, a creative uh, final project for students. So it's really about documenting their voice, but also helping them articulate um, uh, um, what the expectations will be, but, but to get them to start thinking about what are the expectations for college. So we bring in faculty members who can work with students to both present research, but also to get them thinking about some of the skills that they're gonna need. And I would say the academic lectures are, are focused on uh, building on their strengths and assets. And so uh, Dr. Kafai, she, she works with uh, the writing component, but it's very creative writing. Um, and she talks, she asks them to write their story. And so then later she get, they, students are able to share their story. Uh, mm -hmm. Another faculty member does social networking. So gets them to start thinking about who do they already have in their pockets per se. Uh, to be able to do the work that they need to do here at Cap Poly Pomona and also who do they need to meet and so putting it all into context in terms of assisting them to see the bridge of uh, what what poly transfer has to offer or what they have to offer as transfer students when they come to Cap Poly Pomona. That's really helpful thank you. It does beg a question that I had in my mind which is there are so many things you could be doing and you do do a ton but how do you all choose which activities um, to focus your efforts on? Well, we have a couple of priorities. And one is that we want faculty engagement. We know that you know, getting to know your campus is really important, but uh, perhaps even more important is finding a faculty member who you can connect with. And so we do this, um, uh, you know, this is like a faculty um, uh, meet and greet, and uh, so we, we, we invite trans faculty allies from all over campus and we try to organize it around uh, discipline so that we have STEM and humanities, but we have, have students engage with speed rounds where they sit at a table with three or four different faculty from a discipline or a college and ask questions so they're not just involved with faculty in their own discipline. And that's really important to us. So we want to make sure that they get faculty engagement. We also want to make sure they, they find out about um, important resources uh, in terms of advising. And so what we had found, and I think we were a little surprised by it, is that a lot of the transfer students did not uh, work with transfer centers at the community colleges, and they didn't have a lot of, um, of uh, success getting uh, advising. And so we want to make sure that they meet their advisors and their colleges and start to make those connections. So some of the, those are some of the things that we prioritize. Got it. Um, we have quite a few questions about the logistics, particularly in terms of the workshops and the, and the coffees, in terms of, you know, how often, um, are they mandatory, um, how do you get faculty to show up? So can you talk a little bit more about that piece of your work and some of the nitty gritty of, of how you pull it off? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they are not mandatory. And that's been, um, we're struggling with that. So for that cohort, the summer cohort, we're, we're actually, I think we're going to ask them to sign a contract, right? Uh, we don't want to be punitive, but we want to make sure that we're, we're connecting with them because we want to see the impact of the connection. And so um, 
we're struggling, but we want to, we, we are hoping to um, create more intentional programming and, and, and say, yeah, we have this summer opportunity available for you, but part of your commitment is that you need to attend X number of events during the year and then do this assessment so that we want, you know, we, we need to be, that's one of the areas where we really need to improve. Yeah, I think part of, uh, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. We do such a great job at summer program uh, that the students themselves uh, feel like they're ready, that they're set. And so we still, we still email, so the peer mentors uh, email them weekly um, and are expected to set up meetings with them quarterly, so two meetings each quarter. And they're given topics and they're trained. And um, I mean, right now the huge thing is semester conversion and making sure the students understand that, how it's gonna <coughs> affect them. Uh, but it, it has been an area where it has been challenging. I think that is why the development of the partnerships has been uh, more on the high end in terms of making sure that we're reaching a lot of transfers. Uh, but, but, but part of that is just, it, just relationships. I mean, I meet with folks from all over campus uh, all the time, and I think that that is what helps folks see the message in terms of what we're trying to do, and also just uh, you know what, what they can do to also better serve their transfer students. I was just at an athletics game last night, um, and the, the compliance officer wants us to do a presentation about polytransfer because I was looking at my notes and uh, they want to know more about what are the services that polytransfer has and how do we get the transfer students connected. In terms of the specifics of coffee chats, uh, that really is about working with your specific college uh, partner. So whether it be a staff coordinator, whether it be sometimes a faculty member who then connects you to somebody, it's just finding the in. And I think it goes back to how Dr. Gomez speaks to it, seizing the moment. It's just, it, it's, it might be a person, it might be a friend of a person, but it's really just making that connection so that then you can start developing uh, something that can, can, look, can look like what it is now. Uh, I, I think I mentioned that the coffee chats were, at, the beginnings were, at, uh, you know, stolen from San Jose, borrowed, whatever you borrowed. want to say. Borrowed. <laughs> <laughs> San Jose State and their model um, that they shared actually at a NASPA conference two years ago, um, and that was just kind of the rumblings of like, okay, how do we do this on our campus to build a community to kind of uh, assist students to meet other faculty and other staff, other resources. And really it was, um, it was just an evolution and we were just recognizing they weren't coming to us, so we need to go to them. And I think that that's sometimes uh, something we don't think as programmers is we want them to come to a building. I mean, when I was a student, I went to offices and buildings, uh, but we have to be more creative. And so we started going to the university quad or right outside the building of the college um, and just working with folks in, in the college to assist with the actual marketing as well. And that has been, that has been very successful, but it does take a lot, of, uh, a lot of connection, like true connection in terms of just seeing the work as, as, uh, as one. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have to be out and about all over your campus. Yeah, and that's the only way to get things done, right? <laughs> and that actually raises another question that came up at our convening, which is you're unique in that you have um, a physical space. To what extent is that helpful, um, particularly given that you just talked about how you have to go out to the students? Um, does that mean they're not finding you in your space? Uh, we have a small space. It's bigger than a closet, but we do have space for students, and they come. They, you know, they'll come and hang out there and do homework. But it is really a small space, and uh, while it's important, um, we couldn't expect them to come there all the time. There's just mm -hmm. you know, we want to create a, a, a place where they can come and get resources, and then we send them out. Mm -hmm. But with the new building, it's a little bit bigger of a space. Um, it's right at the at the uh, um, the opening of our uh, campus, and um, and I think we're going to be flooded with transfer students. So we want to, you know, we really need to negotiate how we serve that population, the broader population, but also maintain this connection with our cohorts and other folks who are looking for, you know, for more engagement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a great lead into the sort of probably what is maybe our final set of questions. But we did have a lot of questions about tracking. Um, and how you keep track of who attends. And it, you're in an interesting position because you just mentioned you do have a cohort of students you focus on, but you also have all comers. Right. Um, so I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about who counts as one of your students. I'm using air quotes if you could see me. Yeah, I and see. then also how you track usage rates and participation. 
uh, with our summer cohort, we immediately put them into a, a, a group. And so we're able to track them. And then for every event, they're doing card swipes or sign-ins, preferably card swipes. And, uh, and then as students come to any event, we, we need their, what we call their Bronco ID. We wanna make sure that they're now in our system. And so even the, the fall welcome, when we get a, a, a several hundred students coming, and we're adding them now to our, you know, to our outreach efforts. We have them sign in because we need to be able to track how many more events they come to. And then you know, what we're hoping to do when uh, in our assessments, our future assessments is to track, well, what happens to those, you know, what's the payoff for those students who came to the summer? And what's the sweet spot? How many events does it take to see a, a real payoff in, term of, in terms of persistence or graduation? We don't know the answer to that, and um, and we're um, we're going to need to know, it, especially if we want to go for more funding. You have to have data to support your efforts. Right, right. Um, and and so, who do you partner with, or how do you partner, and who do you partner with in terms of special programs? And this speaks to data as well, because they often are asked to hold on to their own students. But places like early outreach or Trio. Um, who, are, who are the groups and, and offices that you partner with and how? Uh, I mean, for TRIO, we work closely with our um, EOP Summer Bridge program. So we, we look at um, who is enrolling in terms of who's applying for the summer programs. And we want to make sure that our reach is, 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 is long. And so we make sure that there isn't an overlap. And so we actually uh, connect with them, but then also go to their summer. So last year, we went to their summer bridge program and did a presentation about poly transfer. So part of that is that we recognize that we have a cohort group that we work with specifically, but at the same time, the charge is to work with all transfer students. Mm -hmm. when we talk about all transfer students, it's not just first year transfer students, it's second year transfer, third year transfers were STEM, so there's more, there's folks that, that stay here more than um, two years. Um, so that's some of the work that we do in terms of uh, working with our partners. Um, what was the second part in terms of tracking? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a researcher, so I always wonder, you know, are you, um, do they have tracking systems you can leverage? How are you working with IR? Um, those kinds of things because yeah, we did look at the questions on, on tracking. Yeah, the IR folks have been really helpful. Um, we have recently, especially because of GI 2025, we had them build a dashboard, not necessarily for us, but now we're using it too, that uh, focuses on the cohorts, right? So we have the freshman cohorts because we want to improve those four and six year graduation rates for freshmen and the two and four for transfer students. And um, and we want to see how many students are, you know, for instance, zero to 20 units to degree so that we can make sure that we have targeted interventions for those folks. So if there's a class they can get in the summer or in spring, we make sure that they enroll in that class. Or if they just need that graduation writing test, we make sure that we let them know about that or the option that, you know, that they can take this other course instead. And uh, so we can look at some of those lists and then cross reference those lists with our poly transfer cohort to see, oh shoot, there are five of our you know, 2014 cohort that just need the graduation writing test. And that's when Lorena really jumps into action when she starts targeting those folks and saying, you know, here's this writing workshop or here's the CPU 401 that you can take because you are so close to graduation. Or even now with the, um, with the scholarship that we're gonna, that, that, uh, we're gonna award, you know, folks didn't think that we'd be able to get transfer students applying for this in a, in a, in a month. Uh, we have, we're going to give 10 to 15 you know, uh, uh, scholarships, and we have 150 students who applied in the last two weeks because of the outreach that Lorena has done. So she targets our students and then sends it to other folks. That's great. So I have one final question. We're almost at time, but we did have a question about calendar, and I think this also relates to the earlier question um, about, you know, the logistics of the workshops and how many events per term um, you do, but we do have a question about how you address the need, the career needs of your students. So, for example, if an accounting student needs to zip on over to career services ASAP to get involved in, you know, internship and job recruitment timelines. So, do, how do you calendar your events? Uh, I mean, we calendar it based off of uh, 
being mindful in terms of as a quarter system, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to the term conversion just because we'll have more time with our students and our program and calendaring. But, uh, you know, the first two weeks are kind of weeks where students are still getting back into uh, campus, situating themselves. Um, so really hitting uh, week three and four, uh, because then week five is already, and week four we're already hitting midterms. And so we're being mindful of the, the academic calendar um, and looking at really what that, what, what is uh, happening in terms of academics for students. Uh, so looking at three and week three and four in terms of programming, and some of that programming, as you see, like stress management, it, it is, it does, it, it, it's intentional in terms of when it does it fall. Do we want stress management at the end of the uh, quarter when they should get best uh, practices on and tips on that in the beginning? Um, or graduate writing tests, we look at uh, the graduate writing test uh, dates and we actually will host it in partnership with uh, our Learning Resource Center, Test Center, and our Asian Pacific and Pacific Islander Student Center. And, and we'll do it the Tuesday before that Saturday because we know students uh, procrastinate, uh, but they, but we had a full house. I mean, we have full houses because students are, are looking for that. And more recently, I mean, it's interesting when we talk about calendar, calendaring, um, students aren't on our schedule and students, we were at, students are now asking, is there a podcast or is there a live feed? Because they mm. want sure that they're accessing these resources, um, these workshops per se, like I said, in a digital format. And so those are where we're, we'll move towards in terms of uh, evolution, because if we, are, if we are being charged to do cohort work and then all transfer student work, um, one, one class in the fall is over 3,500 students. And so that's only gonna continue. Um, and our reach isn't, uh, our capabilities right now in our office in terms of space and also uh, just the professional staff is, is an, it, it, that's just, we can't make that. And so I think uh, those are some of the, the questions that we'll need to also still, still feel, figure out for ourselves. That's really helpful, thank you. So we are just at time and I know Tara wants to do a couple of final thoughts. So I do want to thank you all for your insight and your time and thank all the participants for their questions. Um, this has been really, really informative, at least for me. So thank you again. Um, and Tara, you can finish this off. Sure. Yeah. Thank you from me also to everyone. I found this to be really rich. And so hopefully everybody who had a chance to join us today did as well. Um, I just wanted to do a quick shout out about our next convening, um, which is on April 13th, and it's going to be focused on first year student success. So if you haven't had a chance to register for that, um, do it quickly because our deadline is Friday. And go ahead and just email me. My email is up on the screen right now um, if you'd like more information. And <coughs> Um, and then other than that, I just another big thank you to Cal Poly Pomona for sharing their work around transfer student success with folks. Um, hopefully it was a positive experience for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. <laughs>